Hello friends, welcome to another life-changing television show with your host, Dr. Francis Miles. We are the only show that I know of on TV around the world that is dedicated to teaching body of Christ, the understanding of the Melchizedek priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the royal priesthood of all believers and on the gospel of the kingdom. We are so excited to bring you this broadcast every week. Praise God. Now listen, before we go into the life-changing word we have for you today, boy, I want to invite you to a life-changing event that we have every year downtown Atlanta, the Our King's Conference. It will change your life. I wanted to check this out and I'll be right back to give you the word for the day. Praise God. Hallelujah. over Barabbas but she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption that Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death because a normal death does not do anything for you and I there should not be any effect of death on any part of your life the actual sign of Pentecost is the power of authorized utterance at a higher level where your words pierce the hearts of people and they can't shake the impression of what you created. If you're up against principalities and powers en contra de principados, and Satan is knocking you around y el enemigo te está dando contra ti, put praise on in your car. Pon alabanza. Put praise on Por, in your house. En, you see, God wants you to know today that he wants to pull you somewhere that maybe you don't know what it looks like, but it looks a whole lot better than wherever you at right now. God never changes his mind. He just may take you out of a spot that you should have been in that would have been easier for you, but he'll always put you right exactly where you're supposed to be. God wants you to know it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but your spirit is gonna raise up in you and he's gonna take you right through that mountain. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. No matter what's happened, my God is faithful. No matter what I feel, my God is going to come through. No matter what they say, my God is going to show up. No matter what I think, my God is on time. He's always been on time. He's never early. He's never late. My God is going to show up. Hello, saints. I'm telling you, if you can join us in the amazing city of Atlanta, I'm telling you, Ray Charles was right when he said, I got Georgia on my mind, because I'm telling you, in October, you better put Georgia in your mind so that you can be there with us. It's going to be amazing. The theme for this year is transforming nations through the gospel of the kingdom. It is going to be amazing. Praise God. Now listen, I'm excited that you are watching us on this amazing network around the world. You want to make sure that you deviate out of this program because I'm telling you, it is the only one that I know of on television that is dedicated to teaching the body of Christ around the world the understanding of the Melchizedek order. What is the order of Melchizedek? What is this priesthood of the kingdom all about? This is the show that will answer many of those questions that many of you have wanted to understand about the order of Melchizedek and also about the gospel of the kingdom. So we are very excited to be broadcasting from this powerful, world-recognized network. Praise Jesus. 
Now today I want to bring a teaching on tithing under the order of Melchizedek. Tithing under the order of Melchizedek. I know some of you get antsy the moment you are with tithing, you cannot tighten up. And the reason you do it is because you've never really had teaching on tithing from the perspective of the order of Melchizedek which actually is the first form of tithing mentioned in the Bible. Unfortunately, most churches do not understand it. Most pastors don't even talk about it. But I pray to God that this, this, this show will be the beginning for many pastors and many of you to begin to understand that there is a more excellent way of tithing than is tithing under the order of Melchizedek. Now, I'm going to begin from the book of Hebrews chapter 7, and I'm going to be saying some things you never thought a preacher might say about tithing, but you might as well hear some new truth that will allow you to really understand what was in the mind of God when God created, you know, the ordinance of the tithe. It's not the, the things we see in the church today. You know, it is not to put bling bling on the, only any man of God. There is a reason, a more lofty and spiritual reason, sacred one, why God ordained the principle of the tithe. So in the book of Hebrews, the Bible just says in chapter 7 of Hebrews, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the sort of the kings and blessed him, and to whom also Abraham gave a tenth or a tithe of all, first there being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. And then it goes on to tell us that this man was divine, that Abraham met because he says he was without father, without mother. Anytime you're without father, without mother, you are out of human parentage. That means you're not human anymore. Uh, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days or end of life means he's not an angel. He's more than angel. So we know he's not human. We know he's not angelic. He's above the angelic realm because he is preexistent. You know, but made like the son of God, he remains a priest continually. So we know that the Melchizedek who met with Abraham was one of the members of the Godhead. You know, and, and uh, uh, most theologians, including myself, believe it was a theophany of Yeshua, uh, Jesus, before the incarnation. Now verse 4 is what, and verse 4 and verse 5 is what I want to concentrate. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tithe of the spoils. And then he says in verse 5, And indeed those who are the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is from their brethren, though they come from the loins of Abraham. But here who is genealogy, that's verse 6, but here who is genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham. And blessed him who had the promises. This is amazing, people. It's very clear that the writer of the book of Hebrews creates two pathways of tithing. He creates two pathways of tithing. There is a tithing according to the law that is now connected to Levi. So Levi, who was the priesthood of the nation of Israel for over 4,000 years, was given by divine mandate the ability to collect tithes from the 12 tribes of Israel, really from the, uh, from the 11 tribes of Israel, were non-priestly tribes, uh, where he was to collect the tithe out of them, you know, according to the law. But then the Bible talks about this other tithing system that is connected to a much loftier priest by the name of Melchizedek. Now Melchizedek comes from the Greek Hebrew word Melchizedek. Melchizedek, Melchizedek, two words, Melchizedek is king, Zedek means righteousness. So essentially Melchizedek means a king of righteousness, which is emblematic of who Jesus is. He is the king of righteousness. Because no human being can wear the title uh, really truthfully because we are all born in sin, conceived in sin ever since the fall of our first progenitor by the name of Adam. But this one, that this Melchizedek was a king of righteousness. So we find that there's a tithing system connected to Melchizedek that is more lofty and different from the tithing according to Levi or what you would call the popular Malachi tithe type chapter 3 tithing model. You know, and so we know that these two tithing systems cannot be the same because they are governed by two different priesthoods with two different types of mandates, you know, and uh, operational dynamics. 
But we understand that the priesthood of Levi, the tie was according to the law. Now the Bible is very clear to, to those of us who are now born again, living under the New Testament, that we are no longer under that, that uh, 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 legalistic uh, uh, dimension of law. We, uh, yet the law has not been done away with. It has just been fulfilled in Christ Jesus. So when we are in Christ, we fulfill the law of God. So when the Bible says we're not under the law, we're under grace, that's exactly what it means. It does not mean Christ has abolished the law because Jesus said, do not think I've come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So Christ is the only human being who never sinned, is the only being who never lied. So every all the righteous demands of the law were pinned on Jesus and thank God he passed them with flying colors. And then because the Bible said, the soul that sinned that must die, the Lord demands death for sin. Jesus died on the cross. So literally he has fulfilled the law all the way to death. Now we have been resurrected, our old man crucified with Christ. Now we, our new man has been resurrected to a newness of life in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we are not under the law, we are under the grace or the grace dispensation. We are under grace because we don't have to fulfill the law the way the, way, uh, the, the Jewish people and, the, and Jesus had to do it before Calvary. We fulfill the righteous demands of the law by just living in our bodies the life of Jesus Christ, the one who fulfilled the law. So even now, so therefore, our tithing under the order of is is tithing under grace. It is tithing that is driven by the embers of grace. It's not driven by the embers of legalism. There's nothing, nothing of that kind. As a matter of fact, when you go to the book of Genesis 14, where Abraham gives tithe to Melchizedek, you do not find that there was any law in place compelling him to tithe. And if he did not tithe, God was going to release a curse on him and his family, you know, for not tithing. No, Abraham tied from a place of revelation, from a from a place of grace, from a place of, of, of intimacy, from a place of adoration. Is tithing for today, Dr. Mouse? Yes, tithing is for today because we are the high priest in heaven, the Lord Jesus, under the order of Melchizedek, who is receiving the tithe, according to Hebrews chapter 7, if you, if you go any further. It is for today. What is different is how the tithe is, ex is exacted from the people of God. It cannot be under compulsion, under pressure, under the threat of curse. Or if you do not tithe, God is going to curse you. You know, if you don't tithe, you're not going to make the money you need to make. As a matter of fact, it might blow your mind when I tell you this. That tithing under the order of Melchizedek has nothing to do with getting more money. Now, I'm not saying if you're tithing, God will not bless you financially. I believe he will. But I want you to understand something. The first man, Abraham, to give tithe under the order of Melchizedek was already rich. He was very rich before he ever gave his first tithe. That's amazing. Now, this gets some pastors nervous when I say this because they think that I'm going to re remove the incentive for people for tithing. But the truth of the matter is anytime you connect tithing to money, you actually lower the frequency and the power of the tithe because the tithe was designed for things money cannot buy. And I'm telling you, my friend, there are things in this world money cannot buy. And I'm telling people who roll over, people who roll over, billionaires who roll over to have access to assets money cannot buy. Why? Because everything else money can buy, they already got it. I mean, whatever, drugs, women, uh, uh, jets, whatever, booze, what is. Whatever money can buy, they already got it. And for, some, for many of them, it's killing them. So guess what they are looking for? Things money cannot buy. Assets that come from another planet, another world. Tithing under the order of Melchizedek was designed by God to give Abraham, the first man to tithe, access to an economy that is not of this world access to in the invisible realities of the powers of the kingdom to come. That is the reason why he had to tithe. He tithed for that reason, not to get money. He already had it, you know. I don't want to bust anybody else's bubbles, you know, but listen, there is a, there, there's a loftier reason for tithing than tithing for money. As a matter of fact, the Lord told me never to tithe for money. Now, I'm not saying you cannot do it. I just cannot do it. And by the way, you know the funny thing? Ever since I talked tithing for money, money runs after me like a puppy. It just does. It's amazing how, how, how things work. The law of nature. That when you start running after something, it starts to, run, it starts to chase you instead. 
That's amazing. Maybe that's what God wants to do with some of you is change the chase. You've been chasing money your whole life. It is time for money to start chasing you. The hunter becomes the hunted. How would you like that? God can change it in your life, in your economy, if you understand that the, the loftiness of the tithe under the order of Melchizedek. Man, I have so much to say about this teaching, you know, but, but thank God, you know, I got it on YouTube. I've got it on my Facebook uh, page. I'm telling you, you know, but, 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 but I'm going to take it as long as I can take it on my TV show because I want you to get, I want you to get excited about what God is going to do. Now, listen, I am not out of revelation. I've got some major things to deliver on the tithe, but I don't want to go anywhere because there's something I want to share with you and then I'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. Hey, since I love being on television, television is amazing. But I tell you, there is not enough time on television to say all that needs to be said. That's why I thank God for my social media platform on YouTube and Facebook. Listen, I have a powerful teaching on I speak to the earth, release prosperity. It is a powerful apostolic revelation about how you are designed to speak to creation and creation can move. Remember, what was created by the mouth of God or by the word of God can be moved by your words. You better get into that teaching. It is life changing. It will unlock prosperity that has been locked for you in the land. It's going to cause you to understand your dominion over creation. It's a game changer. But I can teach it right here on this TV network. We don't have enough time for me to really break it down. So I'm asking you to take uh, some time when this program is over. Go to my YouTube channel, Francis Mouse International, and look for the teaching, I Speak to the Earth, Release Prosperity. Or you can go to my Facebook, if Facebook is your thing. At Dr. Francis Mouse, either teaching is also there. But make sure while you are there, you subscribe or you follow because you don't want to miss this powerful time of the God encounter when I level it on levels that are not possible on television. That's why I'm encouraging you right now. Don't forget to subscribe and follow. Uh, go to YouTube and look for Francis Miles International and go to Facebook and just type in Dr. Francis Miles and you see my official page. Click follow and you're all hooked in some powerful times of the God encounter. Yes, you can speak to creation and begin to see matter begin to move in a mighty way and uh, get the breakthrough you, you desire and need. Most importantly, the earth was designed by God to do one thing for you, to give you prosperity. That's what the earth was designed. You can command it to give you prosperity. If the earth was never designed for you to live in poverty, for you to live in struggle, you can command it just like God did in Genesis 1 11 when he spoke to the dirt and said let it bring forth grass you know uh, seed yielding fruit I mean all that kind of stuff and the earth brought it forth it can do it for you so take some time and go to my social media channels YouTube uh, Facebook and even on Rumble and you will get these powerful teachings Amen So like I was saying uh, before the break that tithing under the order of Melchizedek was designed for loftier things. I know that in the world we live in, we're, it's a money-driven world. So we tend to give money God-like powers. That's where mammon comes into play. That's another subject for another day, which I'll do on the program. But I can tell you, within the economy of the kingdom, God wants you to understand that there are things that money cannot buy. And they, those are the most valuable things in life. And actually, when the more you make money, you know, you're going to find out very quickly that money does not solve all the problems, particularly the most intricate ones, the most important ones. You can have a billion dollars and can't get your daughter to love you, can't get your son to behave right. So you need an anointing that can change that thing around. So there are things money cannot buy in this world. So let's look at the book of Genesis 13, see what I'm talking about. This blew my mind when I found this in the Bible. Uh, Genesis, the Bible says this, uh, Genesis 13 verse 1, Then Abram went up from Egypt, and he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him in the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. He was very rich in silver, in livestock and gold. 
That's amazing. So when I saw this, I said, Lord, this is amazing. Why would you make, allow Abraham to become very rich in silver and gold? You know, before you taught him the principle of the tithe. You know, and uh, the Lord, when I asked him that, the Lord said to me, now you are asking the right questions. Now you're getting to closer to understanding the power of the tithe, the real power of the tithe. You're not teaching the tithe correctly to my people. You know, you make it about money, but tithing is about things money cannot buy. Why would a man who's rich in silver and God need a tithe? Well, uh, I'll give you two, two main reasons for this program. Not because I can give you more, but we don't have enough time on the broadcast to do it. Uh, but here, check this out. Number one, Abraham got all that money from the king of Egypt. Much of it came from the king of Egypt when he leveraged his wife. You know, we, he actually sold his wife because the Pharaoh really believed Ab that, Lo that Sarah was the sister of Abraham. And so he brought him a king's dowry, silver, gold, servant. It was a big deal. That shows you Sarah was hot. Man, she must have been so beautiful. I mean, for a king to be able to put up that kind of money for this girl, she looked pretty good. But anyway, Abram got that money. So the Bible is actually describing tainted wealth. It's describing tainted wealth. There goes in the problem of money. That you can make money even when it's tainted. Money, money does not need you to be highly anointed to make it, to tell you the truth. There are drug dealers who are making more money than pastors. It's honest. There are women working the red district of Las Vegas. They've mastered the red district. My God, they make more money than many apostles that I know around the world who are slaving it for Jesus. I mean, giving their life for Christ. And they make, they make a fraction of what prostitutes in Las Vegas and, and Paris are making today. So money is, doesn't, doesn't take a lot to capture unrighteous mammon. You can get it by devious ways that are not righteous. Okay, and Abraham was able to get that money by selling his wife to Pharaoh, and he got a lot of money. So he was rich in, in God and silver. Here's the problem. Those said to me, when he got tainted money, tainted money brought a lot of spirits into his house. How do we know? As soon as he arrived from Egypt, there was strife, chaos in his family, between him and Lot, they began to fight. You see, not all money is equal. Some money comes into your wallet, into your house with the spirit. If that spirit is not exercised, it could change your family like that. So tithing it allows God to intercept what is coming with your money. It allows God to clean your money so that, they, so that the blessing of the Lord may make you rich without adding sorrow to it. That's why Abraham needed to tithe, even though he had a lot of money before the tithe. The money had brought Gehenna. The money had brought spirits into his life. But the tithing to Melchizedek gave God the legal right to become his Kohen, his priest, over the resources, and God could begin to sanctify that which was previously unsanctified. Boy, that's the reason I tithe. He I tithe from Jesus, my Melchizedek, according to Hebrews. He ever liveth to make intercession, and he receiveth the tithe, according to Hebrews chapter 7. I want the Lord to intercept what's coming with my money. I don't know what my money, who I don't know who the, I don't know who the last person who was holding the check or the money that, that is in my hand. See, the last person to hold that money could be a witch, and you never know what they spoke to that money to do. You never know what kind of spirit they put on it. I, you know, you get that money, last is coming upon you. All of a sudden, look, I don't understand. I love my wife, I love my husband, but now, every time, I'm just having these lustful thoughts, want to do something crazy. Where did that come from? Well, it came with the last $100 bill that you brought into your house, but you refused to tithe on it, so God had no legal right to be able to clean it, to touch it as your Kohen, as your priest. My God, I'm telling you, if there's no other reason for tithing than that, man, I'll, I'm lining up in the line to get my tithe in. This is a reason people are having so many problems in the church today. You know, you think, well, I'm not tithing, I'm getting away with it. You're not, no, you're not. You know, because money uh, that is not touched by the priesthood of God, enemy loves it. He marks it. He can use it as a medium of transportation. Because remember, matter, matter can carry spirit dimensions. That's why handkerchiefs are taken from the, from the body of Paul, according to Acts 19, will be placed on the sick 
and the anointing that was on him will transfer to the to the to the handkerchief. It's a matter. It's a dead cloth, but yet the anointing can travel. Spirit dimensions can be transferred from one person who's got that spirit to somebody else, and they get delivered. They got healed. What about if the man is carrying witchcraft? Would not witchcraft be released in your in your house? Over a sudden, your children that loved you, behaving right, begin to smoke. They begin to get into all kind of crazy stuff. You're like, what has happened to my children? Now you're fasting, you're praying. And God said, it is that $50. It is that $100 you brought into the house. It is that money that you refused to tithe on. So I couldn't touch it. So guess what? Which card that was put on that money came right into your house because you didn't have a priest who could intercept the spirit dimensions that are on your money that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Saints, I'm telling you, when God taught me this, when God taught me this aspect of the tithe, it has changed my life. It has changed people in my network. It's changed my sons and daughters. They understand the seriousness of giving God what belongs to him, giving God a tithe of that. You know, not because everything you have does not belong to God, but it's called the order of first mention. It's the order of first fruit. It is choosing God first and watching God begin to move in your life to begin to reverse everything else that the enemy has sent in your life to cause you trouble and to, to compete with who God is in your life. Since I'm telling you, this is powerful stuff. I have a book I wrote called uh, Ties of Honor. Ties of Honor. You can find it on francismouse.com or you can find it on Amazon. Ties of honor. It will change your life. It will take the stitching and just explode it, you know, in, in precept after precept. But I believe that many of you have heard from the Lord today. So I just pray for every one of you that's been watching us today who are gave up on tithing. I pray to God right now, God will touch you. God will cause you to reconsider. God will deliver you from how you feel about it. So you can begin to allow the high priest Jesus to intercept your money before the enemy uses it to jack you up. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. In the meantime, DVR these TV shows so you never forget any one of them. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our next broadcast, but watch what comes next. In this explosive book, best-selling author Dr. Francis Miles confronts head-on inaccurate patterns of tithing within the global body of Christ. This book is a must read for those who have given up on tithing and those who tithe regularly. Dr. Francis Miles will show the reader why Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 12 tithing model is not God's best tithing system for New Testament believers, while simultaneously uncovering the Abrahamic tithing model, which is based on honor instead of legalism, a breakthrough tithing model that the devil and religious tradition have tried to cover up until now. Get this life-changing book now.